Welcome back y'all. Today we are going to be talking about why we went dairy free. So we're so glad that you joined us today guys and today um, we, me and Matt, wanted to sit down. This has been a long time in the making video, something that has been over three years, probably about three and a half years now, yep. um, that we've been saying, we need to do this video, we need to do this video, mm -hmm. and we just never really got around to doing it. But you, some of you out there have asked, um, why are we dairy free on our homestead? Mm -hmm. What led up to that? Um, how that looks in our family and all of those questions. So we wanted to share our story and it is a story and a journey oh, yeah. of going dairy free. I feel like that word journey gets like overused yeah. and abused these days, but um, this was definitely our story in going dairy free. There's so many different aspects oh, yeah. and um, everything to this. So before I jump into it, let me just say, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our Definitely. channel. We would love to have you be part of our YouTube family. Please check us out over on Instagram. We're in the process of re reinventing our Instagram and yep. getting it up to date for the 2020 year. And um, so bear with us, um, you guys that are over there. If it kind of looks like a mess and sloppy yeah. right now, it's okay. We're just rearranging every day and trying to make that more appropriate for the year of 2020. Two. <laughs> 2022. Sorry guys. Woo, the years are getting away from me. Okay. As well as our website, our farm shop, which is thetexasboys.com. Um, the boys business here at home. Go check that out. That is also in the process of being updated and renovated on a daily basis. Um, and hang tight for all those new recipes that are going to be coming. Our native area is also going to get a facelift as well yeah. and get more recipes added. So please bear with us. We're trying to do all of the things here. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into our story. So we're going to go all the way back to the beginning of the story of our experiences with dairy. So my husband and I grew up consuming dairy just like everybody else, super processed, just your regular grocery store, cheapest milk you can buy off the shelf dairy. That's what we had available to us as kids and all through our marriage up until we had Matt. And um, I nursed Matt like all of my babies. Um, through up until about a year or so, year and a half old. And then um, I tried to put him onto just regular dairy milk. And um, I found out that he was kind of allergic to it, not in an extreme way, no. not in like he would go to the hospital, but he would get rashes mm -hmm. from it. Um, it would just make him kind of congested. He just didn't do well with dairy. Um, so I, after a couple of times of introducing it and it not going well, I was like, okay, well that's fine. We can just do almond milk or other types of milk. Um, and the pediatrician was like, as long as he's getting other things, you know, to substitute that, he's going to be totally fine. So that's kind of what we did. And, um, along those same years, then we had James. And James, I, I nursed until he was about five months old and then I could no longer nurse him for some different reasons. And, um, and my pregnancy, um, I was again pregnant when he was five months old um, with our next son, Buddy. And um, so I tried putting James on an infant milk, um, like a, a powder milk, and he did not do good with it at all. So um, I ended up putting him on a powdered goat milk. Um, and so by that time, I'm seeing this trend that my little toddlers um, are not reacting well to normal dairy. Um, so when we, at that point in our life, we were trying different things. We were meeting different people that were more inclined to healthy food, whole foods, mm -hmm. and they were omitting dairy from their diet. So I just kind of switched over and we just did almond milk. Um, and 
I, I don't remember if we did rice milk probably at that time as well, just store-bought, um, that's what we did. Um, and we kind of just didn't do much dairy at that point in our life at all. Um, I kind of learned like, oh, well, raw dairy is kind of a really great thing. Mm -hmm. We didn't have access to raw dairy no. up north where we were. So we just did the next best thing, which was just almond milk, rice milk, and just like dairy-free stuff. And, um, and the kids did great. Everybody did great. Oh, yeah. um, we pretty much went like plant-based, vegan for a long time. We did fruitarian for a couple of years, um, me and my husband. And we didn't do straight out fruitarian for the kids. We still did grains and rices and different things with them. And we did get dairy goats a few years down the line. That was when you were probably four mm -hmm. yeah probably like four years yep. old we got dairy goats and so then we always had fresh goat milk in the house which was our replacement to um the almond milks and stuff like that so we were really excited to have that um and we had that for a few years and we had a great time you were really little you probably don't remember much about those dairy Not much. goats yeah but it was a really awesome experience for me and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed milking them and stuff. So anyway, well, there was a couple other episodes, I think, in your life mm -hmm. where you consumed dairy and then like your whole body would break out into yep. a rash. Um, and then when we moved down here, we kind of went back to um, dairy again for a yep. certain point and and we were we had access to raw dairy for the yeah. first time so we were like oh this is wonderful local dairy local dairy raw it's probably half of the cows or 3 quarters of them are a2a2 A2. Yeah. this is going to be great yeah. and you like were breaking out in hives and not with that milk though not with that oh milk. i'm sorry that milk okay so when we came down here we we were able to actually locate a dairy that that was able to sell raw milk. And a large majority of their herd was A2, A2. I know quite a few people when I mention that type of milk, they have no idea what that is, but mainly in uh, layman's terms, it is A1, A1 milk. When you drink that, you're, it takes your body so long up to don't quote me on this, but like around 24 hours or more yeah. for your bot for it to go through your whole body. So it's really rough on your body, and it actually your body takes the milk and it has to convert it into an acid. So it's a lot. But with the A2A2 milk, your body can process it in I think it's like in less than 30 minutes to an hour or so. Anyway, I was perfectly fine with A2A2 milk. The herd must have had a lot of A2A2 cows in there because when we went and bought the milk there, I was perfectly fine on that. So if you're looking for A2A2 milk, you're mm -hmm. probably going to find a herd of Jersey cows yeah. um, or cows that are bred specifically yeah. these days for A2A2. Or like I said, um, if they are, then they'll probably be more expensive. But yes. also a herd of Jersey cows are probably going to be high in A2A2 mm -hmm. genetics. Higher percentage. Um, yeah. Or there's a couple other breeds as well that mm -hmm. are high in A2A2 yep. genetics. So so you were doing well with it. With that. Yeah. With that. Um, any other time I w we would go out to town and uh, store -bought just milk. get store-bought milk, I wasn't ever able to get it. Uh, I was never able to drink it. Um, I could kind of have it in like certain things, but not like in any type of cheese form or anything like that. I would still pretty much break out. In hives. In hives. Like scary hives. Yeah, it's kind of like scary hives. I remember once I broke out so bad, you looked it up and they were like, yeah, just rub honey all over them. So I had to like rub honey all over them. It my, was like, yeah, it was, that was a late night and I was, yeah. I was trying to figure out like what else I could do for him. I had already given him the max amount of Benadryl mm -hmm. that he could have. He was swollen up and hot yeah. his whole body. And I didn't want to go to the ER no. if we didn't absolutely have to. Yeah. So I had read somewhere, honey, so this poor kid, I'm like lathering mm -hmm. honey on his whole body. Yep. Anyway, praise the Lord, we did not have to go to the no, ER. But um, there's been things with dairy. Yeah. So, so we had access to raw dairy, raw dairy. and we just thought we had like hit the lottery for lack of 
non-better Christian uh, words. Yeah. Um, and we were just like, this is amazing. We have access to raw and, dairy and everywhere it, here. And it was relatively cheap, too, yes. compared to a lot of other places around the U.S. that I do know it's up over $8 a gallon. And a lot of people just can't afford it. If it was that, like, if it was that price down here, we wouldn't have been able to yeah. afford it at all. But um, we were able to get it at three dollars sometimes a mm -hmm. gallon on like if it was a couple days okay. old or so. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. we were making our own yogurts. We were doing a lot yeah. of things with the raw dairy. Mm -hmm. And then that brings us to the point that we moved to our homestead. Yeah. Um, so we were only here about nine months and we yeah. ended up being blessed with our homestead yeah. and we moved here and probably within, well, we had dairy goats. Yeah, we had dairy goats here on first. the farm. First. So that was really, really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but then we didn't have goats here that long, maybe. No, maybe like a year yeah. or so. And then we got rid of them because they were just such a hassle because this was before this whole property was even cleared out like it is now. And we were trying to do the whole Joel Salatin and Justin Rhodes um, that big movement that was starting to go. It wasn't yet popular yet, but we were like, that's a pretty cool idea, and it does actually work. Rotational grazing. Rotational grazing, that's what I'm talking about. We were more like rotationally brushing <laughs> with them, and it it was just very trickier. It's probably easier with little littler goats, um, but we were ha we had a Sonnen, we had a Nubian, so I'm talking like, they're, big goats. they're bigger goats. They're like three and a half feet tall or so um, to their back. And when you're moving them all through brush and everything like that, it, it does wear on you. And they, they did an excellent job. Don't get me wrong on that. I mean, if you ever need land cleared, you get some goats. But right. um, after everything was kind of cleared out and started really getting cleared out, um, we, we were, were like, we were ready for a cow. We were like, this is just, you know, yeah. yeah. Goats so, are supposed to be phase one, and yep. then you move, and to, move the to the cow. Yeah. So we brought our cow home, and we just thought, like, we this was like mm -hmm. the ultimate, right? Yeah. You go to the, all the homesteading mm -hmm. channels, and yeah. what's like their ultimate dream animal Jersey is cow. the Jersey the cow, dairy cow, right? A dairy cow, any kind of cow, mini, whatever, right? Yeah. And that's like the pinnacle of homestead, oh, yeah. right? Like you've made it when you have a cow, right? <laughs> So we had our cow and she was just Oh, she was awesome. awesome. Honey was awesome. Yeah, honey yeah. was just like a, having a big dog in the backyard. Yeah, we didn't ever have we I think we started off using her like put we started off milking her in a stanchion, but after that we were able to just milk her out in a field or kind of halfway tie her up to a tree. Right. She was super chill. One strand of wire, yep. like rope so easy. electric wire. She didn't want to get out. No. She was like the opposite of a goat. Like oh, she I know, it's so nice. Goats wanted to get out, yep. cows want to stay in is what we Yeah, learned. pretty much. Only rarely you'll get a naughty cow, but then yeah. you usually just butcher them. But no, our Jersey cows, we, so then after that, we owned one, a uh, honey, for how many years? A year or two? Mm -hmm, something like Probably. That. And then, why did we get another one? Well, we wanted to give... Because she went out of... We wanted milk. to cycle them. Yeah, so cycle that way, them. one would have a baby, and then the other yep. would have a baby, and then we'd have milk all year round, mm -hmm. and we could give the one a break while the other was having a baby, yep. and that kind of thing. So... Yep. Yeah. And honey produced about, what in her peak, she produced about... Two and a half gallons to three gallons a day or so. Um, so it was quite a bit of milk. Right. Um, and we were still, I think, did we have did we have Junior at the time? Yes. We had Junior, but not... We had my little girl, We too. had Grace, too. Yeah. Yeah. So we were doing all of the things. We had a, oh, yeah. a huge amount of our own A2A2 dairy milk coming in, coming in every single day. We had a big rotation going on with bringing in the fresh milk, making cheese, making butter, ice making cream. ice cream, making yogurt. It was just yeah, all, it was a lot. It was a full-time job oh, yeah. of of processing this dairy, but it was a huge addition to our diet and normal normal people that consume dairy normally buy it from the grocery store and normally you're only going to be consuming dairy either in desserts like um 
just like cookies and stuff like that, mm -hmm. or then every blue, or then in your coffee, you know, you right. pour a little bit of cream in there. Right. But I think a lot, the problem that happens, which at the time you don't think it's a problem right. for all these homesteaders out there, sure. are, is that you are consuming a lot more dairy and so much, so much dairy. Limitless. Limit. Right. Yeah. Think about having limitless dairy with right. limit, limitless uh, things that you can make with it. You sure. know, when you have all of this right. um, dairy, you're just like, we got to do something or it just feels wasteful or at the you're time. you're throwing it out to yeah. the birds. Yeah. And the thing is, is that this, we're talking about Jersey cow milk. This is like the most, one of the most richest and highest fat concentrate mm -hmm. type of milk. So, I mean, at certain times of the year when grass was at the peak of growth and everything, honey would produce 50-50. She was a half and half cow. She would do 50% cream, 50% milk. It was right. crazy. Kefir, we made kefir. Yep, kefir and everything. We just did all of the different things so, that you can imagine but, with dairy. Yeah, and that's what I was trying to get onto. I think a lot of homesteaders, it just gets so much. You have so much milk and then you just have to be, you just, you feel like you have to eat it all practically. Sure. So, and then your normal your normal American would only consume so much dairy, but right. then when you have an unlimitless amount of gallons, milk, right. gallons and gallons and gallons, you're just drinking it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there was a big movement with bulletproof coffee and like putting a cup or a half a cup of butter in that and mm -hmm. coconut oil and, sure. you know, very high fat so, you know, concentrate. So stuff. that's where we were. We, yeah. we, we did that for several years. Several years. And then what happened about three and a half years ago mm -hmm. is that um, I noticed and I several several of you noticed yeah. who were following our channel back then um, like several as in like hundreds of you noticed yeah like that. so much we had to go into the comments and delete out like you can put a little thing in there and for we words. for words so like lump neck all this certain thing. So if somebody would comment that, it would just just go ahead and disappear because we got so many right. people emailing us and commenting. And at the time, we were like, "It's nothing. Like people, nothing. why are you freaking right. out?" But it was a but huge, giant. It was. Lump it was huge. In my it neck. It would go like yeah. Was, and hmm. when I would swallow, it would go all the way up, mm. and then it would go back down, and it just stayed there. If and you go. If you, you can go back in time on our YouTube channel and probably find some older videos with her having the lump in her neck. Yes. And seeing it. So, so we didn't really, I didn't think it was anything. I was like, yeah. it's nothing, it's yeah. nothing. And, um, and then finally my husband was begging me and begging me to go to the doctor yeah. and just ask the doctor, out. get it checked out. Just so I case. went to the doctor and the doctor was like, oh my, that is very serious. Yeah. Um, so they sent me for, um, an ultrasound. I got an ultrasound out of my neck. They were highly concerned. They thought that it was a very, very aggressive form of thyroid cancer. Um, I didn't have just one. I had two. I have one on one side and then the giant one on the other side. Um, yeah. and within a month's time, um, I was down at the biggest cancer hospital basically in the country. Um, and I was having two days worth of testing mm. done. They thought yep. for sure all of the doctors, the team down there, thought that it was a very yep. aggressive form as well of thyroid cancer. And we thought we were looking at um, treatments, yep. cancer treatments. Yeah. We thought we were looking at surgery. And at, during that time, that month leading up to me going to the hospital yep. and, and having that appointment down there we had a month of getting our house in order yeah. here prioritizing and saying if we're looking at cancer treatments um mm -hmm. what we need to rearrange our yeah. homestead around like, yeah. um because it was a full it's still it's still full-time job now but it's nothing like it was then we had sure. chickens ducks which we still have those but we had two pigs cow. we had two cows a we had cow. a baby cow that need to be ner uh, that needed to be bottle fed and everything like that. What else? We had quail at the time. We had meat birds at the time. Rabbits. Rabbits at the time. We had everything, mm -hmm. pretty much. So when we were thinking about when we're talking about cancer treatments and everything like that, us kids and dad are going to be having to hold down the fort without mom. So 
we just went into super, just simplify the homestead, practically just reeling it all back into about pretty much having like a dozen chickens. So we sold everything and butchered whatever we could too. Um, so meaning we sold, we sold both of the Jersey cows in less than like a month. Yeah, Literally it was a big blessing. We got rid of all blessing. of the animals. All the animals. So, um, yeah. And then didn't we, we, did we go into super healthy, healthy mode then yes. too for like a month yes. or two months? A, a whole month. Whole so month. from the first day that I learned that it could be the most aggressive form of thyroid cancer. Yeah. I heard that from two doctors yeah. up here that looked at my ultrasounds and then I had a month before I had my appointment, yeah. um, in, uh, at the cancer hospital. Yeah. So, um, during that month, we went into serious, serious healthy mode. I started researching and I found out immediately that um, dairy and gluten are two big triggers to thyroid, thyroid or tied to thyroid issues. You may not believe that. That's fine. Um, you can take all of this and lump it. Um, yeah. But what happened to... Um, all this was happening at the same time was yeah. that um, three other um, homestead channels and really good friends and people mm -hmm. that we respect, all three of those people had dairy for about the same amount of time that mm -hmm. we had had yep. dairy and all three of those people had family members that were having severe, yeah. severe, severe um, thyroid issues. Yeah. So I was just like, we were the fourth family if you yeah. would have lumped us into it. And, and I was just thinking, okay, here we all are. We're all doing this dairy thing. We're all doing yep. this homesteading thing. And here we are, however many years into it. And now one, at least one of our family members or more are like horribly sick with severe thyroid problems. Like crazy severe thyroid problems. So, so is there something to this whole dairy thing and the relationship with thyroid health? So, yeah. um, so we were just like, if it's questionable, we're, yeah. we're just getting rid of it. So we got rid of all the animals, like I said, um, just to downsize, simplify. Um, to simplify. We didn't know what our life was going to look like and we needed to prioritize our time with our children and yeah. not spend any time unnecessarily yeah. taking care of animals when we were, we didn't know what our future was yeah. going to look like. So yeah. And then all this was going on with our friends as well. So we yeah. were just kind of putting all this stuff together. So I just read gluten and dairy were like top on the list for thyroid health um, kind of triggers. And I was like, okay, easy enough, cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> Sugar, obviously, we know that feeds cancer yeah. and it's just really, really bad for you all the way around. So let's reduce that to like that month. Nothing. I think it was probably I think it was nothing. zero, it was nothing. And just no sugar at all. Um, yeah. Now, those of you who have been following us for the past few years, obviously, you know, we do use sugar um, in our baked goods and desserts, yep. but I still don't put sugar in anything else. Like I drink my coffee just how it is. I do not add sugar. Yeah, we're, we are, we consume way less sugar now. Yes. Now knowing more about health and stuff like that. Sure. So, so, um, so I went down there, I went to the cancer hospital and they did a lot of testing and a miracle of miracles. The Lord was merciful, guys. I can only, only attest to yep. how great his mercy is towards our family. Um, I truly 100% believe in my heart that the Lord healed me. Um, yep. I believe that he needed to do some refining in our lives in other areas as well. And he used that experience to do it. Um, and Tell him about the doctor guy. And the little, um, the doctor who um, did my biopsy on mm -hmm. my thyroid told me, he, he said, I want you to be prepared when these test results come back. Um, you know, it could be one of four different options. And yep. um, he told me the four different options it could be. None of the options he gave me was no cancer at all. Okay. Yeah. Because they were just, especially on this one big lump, thinking 100% it was cancer. It was just what type of cancer. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, so two hours later, he came into the room and he, he looked like he had seen a ghost, guys. Um, at that point, my husband was back in the room with me and um, he came in and he was just like, it's not cancer. And we just started bawling, crying and testifying to this doctor. You know, that's all he does all day long mm. at the cancer hospital yeah. is he's very um, specialized. He only takes biopsies of thyroid cancer. That's okay. all he does. And, um, and we were just saying people have been praying like you have no oh, yeah. idea. Like everybody has been praying about this. We've been begging God about this, you know, like this is just an amazing answer, you know? Yep. And, um, and I had confirmation of it before he came in the room. So that's a whole nother testimony. But, um, but he came in the room and he said those exact words and, and I was just, I, we, we just fell apart in yeah. praising the Lord. And, um, and the next day we had to go and meet with the team and the surgeons and everybody, because that's what we were kind of looking at. Yeah. And, um, and they were just all blown away yeah. that it was not cancer. So at that point, um, they didn't have any recommendations for me. They said they could remove it if it was physically bothering me or if aesthetically it bothered me to have that big lump in my throat. And I said, no, I don't really feel like that. You know, I'll wear a turtleneck like as long as it, um, you know, isn't cancer. I'm a happy girl. Like, I don't care. Um, so... Um, so we came home and, but we continued to keep, um, our diet, um, free of gluten and free of dairy and yep. then just being very, very mindful of our sugar intake, um, and just continuing to do all of the things health wise that would someone who was fighting cancer would do because yep. I was just believing it on faith but still i feel like you know there's like the mm -hmm. walls of jericho right and, and you know it's gonna they're gonna fall down those walls are gonna fall down by faith but yet you still have to march around the city right mm -hmm. like you still have to do the things so um so that's still where i live that's the place that i live today is that i'm still marching around the city guys like i believe wholeheartedly that the lord has healed me the lump disappeared yeah, totally gone. gone there is no lump anymore um but i still do all the things because i i just want to live a healthy lifestyle and as when all of this happened what happened in the rest of our family's health as well became very, very evident. So, Definitely. so we all did this together and went yep. through this together. And then I guess we can speak on that. Like, so what were some of the awesome side effects that the rest of the family had? Yeah. A lot of the side effects that we went, the, a lot of the great side effects that went through our family was, um, we all lost a lot of weight. Like a lot. I think you can definitely see that um, in our past videos. We weren't like obesely overweight or anything, but you could definitely see we were more on the chubbier side and things like that. Um, and I think that definitely does happen a lot with um, with these other homesteads that get dairy cows and stuff like that. It's really um, hard to keep the weight off when you're consuming so much dairy. Um, and everything like that. And yeah, so it was absolutely uh, pretty crazy. Yeah. Like I don't, I, if I tried to fit in the size pants, like this was the thing, this is how crazy it was. I was able to fit when I was 14, I was able to fit into my dad's size jeans. Now I can't even, like I couldn't even think about fitting into the jeans that I wore in when I was 14 years old. Like, wow. I would swim in them. And you're going to be 17 years old. I'm going old. to be 17 in uh, this spring. So, yeah, it was just definitely interesting. Uh, very, very interesting. And weight on my face went away. Um, all types of different things like that um, went away. Uh, energy levels went way up yeah. since we went... Uh, when we were eating more holistically and everything like that. And then some of the other wonderful things that happened yeah. when we removed dairy and gluten from our diets is that my little ones had yeah. perpetual ear infections. We were oh. 
perpetually yeah. at the doctor's. And James, too. Um, yeah. James had, James wasn't even a little one, but he no. had perpetual ear infections. Every was, month. We and, were, we were like, uh, hey, uh, can we get like a membership here or something? Because we were there that much. Yeah. For like just, three just, years straight. Just ear infections. Yes. Just ear infections. Not to mention all the other colds oh, yeah. and things like that. Just all the time. And yeah. allergies. Oh, oh my Oh, out the wazoo. I was giving allergy medicine like... Well, the doctor was telling me to even give it pro, like preventatively to keep That's them, not good. To keep them <laughs> drained out so that way it wouldn't it build, up. build up and end up as an ear infection. So I was giving Zyrtec every single day mm. to all my little ones and James to preventatively keep his ears drained so that way it dried up so they wouldn't, yeah, drain into yeah. it, yeah, whatever. It was just... It wasn't good. It wasn't good. No. And when That's we, not natural. And when we got rid of our healthy dairy and our gluten addiction, yep. um, you know, because we like to we like to bake. You guys see it yeah. on our channel. We yeah. like homemade desserts. And we just thought as long as they're homemade and as long as we're doing it's everything good. from scratch. I think a lot of people think then that. it's all good. You don't and, have to buy it from McDonald's. It's healthy. You know, and we weren't eating all the processed foods. We were just eating no. the home-baked Just home-baked, yeah. And, um, yeah, all I can say is that everybody got healthy. Yep. I mean, we were not at the doctor's for, like, three years in a row. Yeah, like, literally. We, it was quite impressive. Like, we haven't had an ear infection since Since, then. literally. We nope. have not had one ear infection. Um, and the other thing that we were noticing, too, with the first um, batch of us kids, which is me, James, and Buddy, and then there's a seven-year gap, and then there's Junior, Grace, and then Little Tex, all of us kids, having barely any dairy in our diet from all up north and everything where we kind of grew up and everything as little ones, um, we had probably close to no cavities whatsoever, really good um, teeth growth and everything like yeah. that. But when we went pretty much like super dairy, dairy <laughs> pretty yeah. much um, down here, that was right when the, all of the little ones were real, real, real tiny, tiny, yeah. just crazy what their teeth look like and everything like that. And we're yeah. still, we are still trying to fix um, all of the problems that it gave um, to their teeth. So Go what ahead. happened also at the same time um, was that when back during the cancer scare mm -hmm. and us making the decision um, and us, we got confirmation from our neighbor in this decision. It was just oh, yeah. amazing how the Lord worked all these things together. We were learning that the three families that I was speaking of, the homestead families that had major trouble with thyroid, yeah. the other trouble that they were having was teeth issues. Yep. They were all having major issues with their teeth. And I'm talking to the point that even their children, massive dental issues. Yeah. I'm not talking normal cavities. I'm no, not talking, I'm talking they had like, six or eight or 10 no. cavities. No, 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 no. I'm it looked talking, like they just ate pure candy for the rest, for their whole entire life. Rotten. And just rot. You know? Yeah, and these are people that I mean, they're doing all the all healthy or, all, things, all organic and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, like, baking from scratch, eating whole foods, just like us. And after we went through uh, my um, cancer scare and yep. all of that, the next thing up on the list was dental. Yeah. Um, and for the little ones, and we started taking yeah. them uh, to the dentist and getting dental stuff done at the normal times that you would yeah. for little kids. And, and it just came back in our face that like, I mean, these kids had like massive, Bad. massive dental issues. Yeah. And like, yeah, Junior had over, he had more than one cavity per tooth in his head. And then the, some teeth had, yeah, had or two or three, two or three. Cavities. And then the dentists were telling us, they were like, so what are y'all eating? Like they've never seen and then, anything yeah, like that. They were like, yeah, they, they were like, truly, we've never seen any of our patients come in here and just have right. loaded to the gills of cavities. Right. And, and they had like candy yeah. or soda and or juices. Yeah. And I'm like, no, we don't do any of that. And stuff. not just cavities, but like teeth. 
like um what would you say uh it, it was like, like degrading decay. or decay yeah teeth so decay. they were decaying yep. before, and they would like chip off too yeah and they're like their teeth are clean it's yeah. not for lack of cleanliness Brush. They're no, clean. no 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 this is something more going on and yeah very interesting um it all just kind of came crashing yeah. down and just came home at during that time and i was thinking back of our friends with their dairy and their teeth issues and i was just yeah. like going okay the i mean the first three children eat pretty much the same as the last three i mean before we drastically changed my diet and mm -hmm. our diet as a family Things were pretty similar. I mean, we eat basically the same foods. So I'm thinking, what was the big, huge difference? And the difference was... That was the only thing we could think of. Raw dairy. That was we the only thing. We had unlimited raw dairy. Literally. The, we've seen tremendous improvement in yep. the kids' uh, teeth, in the little ones' teeth. They are all up to date, finally, in all of finally. their... Um, it's taken in all of their quite things. a while. But there has been, like you were saying, long-term... Um, they're still, yeah. their teeth are not in as healthy condition as nowhere near as yeah. the first three, nowhere near. I mean, they didn't have any cavities between all Pretty three much, of them no. until like maybe one of them had like one cavity at some point. Like it wasn't anything like this. So anyway, um, yeah. And for all the ca calcium freaks out there, we all know about the calcium in the dairy. There's more calcium in carrots, okay, y'all? So we eat lots of carrots. So trust me, we are not going to be calcium deficient. Right. So so it was funny. Um, our neighbor who uh, shared some things with us as we were going mm -hmm. through that, that was a really, really hard time for us. Yeah. It was a really hard decision to sell our dairy cows. We yeah, definitely. Felt like they were members of the family. Yeah, and, and we just felt like failures as yeah. homesteaders. Yeah. And we just felt like wow, how could we have like not seen all of this? And, you know, and, um, and they were just, our neighbors were super supportive and, yeah. and just so encouraging. And, and just, he was just saying, you know, a plant-based diet, you know, where is, is the best thing. And if you add in anything, add in grass fed beef, add in grass, uh, raised, um, what do you say, pasture-raised chicken, um, something like that once in a while. That is the it's best, awesome. best diet that you can consume. Um, so that's our story. Pretty much. Pretty that's much. our reasoning why we continue to eat the way we eat, why we have a dairy-free and gluten-free homestead. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been tremendous, guys. Yeah. I can't tell you. Yeah how wonderful it's been. I mean, with the allergy, I didn't even get into Buddy's asthma no. um, issues that he with, has uh, Yeah. when with it comes gluten. to gluten and us trying to manage that over the years. And we haven't had any of that stuff. Nope. Yeah, and it was kind of hilarious. Uh, I think it was two years after we sold the dairy cows and everything, we were somewhere and or some family came over to our house and they left milk at our house just like a little pint for coffee that they wanted in their coffee and me and rufus were like wonder what it smells like, like so we went and smelled it and it smelled wretchedly disgusting which was very interesting you know how your body wants uh if you know if your body is pretty good at telling you if it's good for you or if it's bad for you mm -hmm. and it was weird how when we smelled it it smelled kind of rancid but then uh, James was brave enough to taste it. And it ta he's like, it tastes perfectly fine. But the smell, he's like, it just didn't taste, it didn't smell good at all. And it was perfectly fresh milk. But yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially for this coming from a kid who, oh. who's milked oh. probably yeah. Yeah. thousands of yeah. gallons of milk. Oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> definitely hundreds. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely yeah. over the years. Um, and yeah, so that's it, guys. That's our story. We're not putting judgment on no, anybody no, and what they're doing no. or anything. My buddy that's down from Indiana, their family, you know, eats dairy, drinks and eats dairy and gluten and everything like that. And we're not judging anybody if they, you know, think. Mm -hmm. But I think it's but it's great to share. Definitely. Um, Just I think, think it's about you great know. to be transparent. Oh yeah. Um, and and to say why we do the things we do, why we don't do the things that we don't do. And for those of you who didn't who didn't know, um, 
all of our story about the cancer scare yeah, exactly. and all of that, or maybe yep. you're going through things or, maybe. you know, and you're like, why is this happening? And then to say, oh, wow. Well, that has happened into them too. Yeah, oh my exactly. goodness, that's why they got rid of the dairy cows. And, you know, um, I just think it's really good to always be transparent. We're all Definitely. learning in this in this whole experience and it's it's good to be honest. Mm -hmm. Anyway, y'all, hope that y'all enjoyed our little sit down talk and please leave your thoughts down in the comments section down below and maybe some stories that you have relating to dairy or gluten or anything like that. And uh, we can't wait to catch y'all right back here at the Texas Boys. All right, bye-bye.